steady Sherry. It's time to get musical. Oh. Yes, our final guest has been a heartthrob for over 40 years, so he's clearly into something good. He achieved international fame at the age of just 16 as part of the great British music invasion of America. Still continuing to delight audiences with his music today, he's joining us for a trip down memory lane. <laughs> Peter Noon. Hello, how are you? Well, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Welcome. Is that, look at this, isn't this fun? It is it? <laughs> well, um, you'll, let's see if you say that at the end of the interview. Let's yeah. 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 So, well, I don't know if, if, you were, if you were watching the show earlier on, but do you recall a fan hiding in a toilet too shy to meet <laughs> you? It was this weird woman in Prestatin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do re remember. Was it Prestatin or no, Ryan Dudnell? No, no. I knew yeah. it was somewhere like that yeah. because my brother told me, and then you went and hid. I remember I know, it was like so. I was, but I was like that when I when I was when I was fond of people. I always froze when it came to the. But you yeah. must have met everybody. I did, you know, I met all the people I wanted to. I was not, unlike you. I didn't hide in the in toilet. The toilet. Yeah. No. I, I got to meet all my heroes when I was very young. I was a bit more cheeky than I am now, and I I would say, could I? Like, I met Tom Parker in Honolulu, and I said, could, could you introduce me to your client? I think, <gasps> figured that was a good thing That's, to say. Yes. And he did, and I met Elvis Presley, and he was absolutely charming. Was he? And, and, I, and, I, and I, was, I had to do an interview for him, with him, and he never did interviews. You know, there are no... I'm, like, one of the few, the five people who interviewed Elvis Presley. And I called my sister, who lived in near, near Landud, no, Prestatin, I think, and she... And I said, I'm meeting Elvis Presley, and I've got, to, I've got to interview him. What shall I ask him? And she said, ask him, does he dye his hair? <laughs> so all through the interview, I'm, I'm like, kept looking up at Elvis, and, <laughs> and he did dye his hair. You yeah. asked him? Did you ask him? No, that? I didn't oh. dare ask him. I, I was afraid. But he was so... He was, I, was, I was very lucky, because all the people that I met when I was a kid were very, very gracious and friendly to me. You know, right. and the people who weren't, I wiped them off my... Right they were they were gone. The Everly Brothers were nice to me. You said the and Beatles were, fan were, were they wonderful. They were fantastic Isn't to all the bands. Isn't it all the big legendary ones are yeah. always the really nice ones? And yeah, and, and I think of yeah. some people who aren't legends who mm. were really nice. Like, mm. I used to run into, like, when we were first on, you see, like, Mike and Bernie Winters and Morecambe mm. and Wise, and they were legendary yeah. to me yes. because they were the people that I grew up with on the television. Mm. Yeah. Has, it, has the business changed then for you since then? I mean, you're saying then. Were they great then? But what happens now? Have, has it, you, you're still in it. You, that's, yeah, you well, still you know, do it. It changed, it changed. When you meet nice people on the way up, it makes you realise... Like, I got a really good fan club because I remember that first time I met the Everly Brothers and they were so kind to me, you know. Mm. So, you know, now when there's a bunch of people in, in the queue waiting for an autograph, you can't be snotty with them. You have yeah. to be very gentle. And, Your you fans know, are people... very loyal, aren't they? What are they called? Hey, Nunatics. No. Nunatics. Nunatics. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right, you're Nunatics. Nunatics. I'm a Nunatic. You're a Nunatic. That's OK. Big bad. So, yeah, we te we've got you. hundreds, and, it, and I'm, I'm happy to have you. You, you fits but perfectly. Well, she fits perfectly. Yes. <laughs> we like nice people. You were so fan. young, weren't you? 16? I think when, when the record went in the charts, I think I recorded it when, it was 50, when I was 15 and then it was, it was out and it was the perfect time to be in a, a rock and roll band, except all the girls that I wanted to date were 18 plus. So that's you not bad. No, um, that's all right. Well, it, was, right. it is when you're 15 and 16, <laughs> and they go, I don't want to be seen out with a kid. Yeah. I had a Maserati, I couldn't get a girl to get in it. But that was oh. not the first time that you were known to the public, because you, were an, you acted before. In yeah, a, in a... I was on Coronation Street like Bruno. Yeah, Only I got... didn't tell my mum I was lo in love with a man. No. <laughs> We've got a picture of you. Here you are Ooh, on no. Cory. Oh, 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 me and, yeah, that's Stanley Fairclough. Oh, oh, gosh, oh you were his it? son, were you? Yeah, yeah, I was Len's son. Oh, do you remember? Yes. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I never knew my lines, and and everybody was so so wonderful and professional, as they probably still are. But I was this kid, and I was perspiring so much from fear because I knew that I didn't know my line, and I wasn't listening, and I was brand new in the business. And they would always cover it. My mom never even knew I didn't remember my lines. They would say my line. Aren't you supposed to be? Oh yeah, because no, <laughs> like, it was live television, Gosh. and it was. 
It was really scary. Yeah. I think at 1961, I was 13 or 14, and I was absolutely terrified. But after that, I never had the same kind of fear. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I used to think I'll throw myself down the stairs so I don't have to do this, you know. How, how have you managed, because, I mean, like our own Colleen, you're a child star, and then you were sort of in, you know, you were in an era of, of music where there were a lot of drugs around, a lot of people went off the rails or, or didn't survive. How did you sort of manage to avoid either becoming arrogant or big-headed or well, getting into arrogant, the drug but, scene? But, you know, I, I, the people that I hung around with were kind of close to the drug scene, and when, and, and when there was, when there were every drug, in, in those days, in the olden days, <laughs> I think all the girls were in one room, and all the boys were in the other room, like rolling joints and stuff. And I always thought that the girls were much more fascinating. I didn't want to talk <laughs> gurus. Interest. I was, yeah. I always, I the stole girls. their girlfriends, basically. <laughs> I would be in the other room stealing their girlfriends. <laughs> Listen, we've got Smoke this... more of that, I'm with your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Listen, you've got this new CD out and you're going to perform for us? Yeah, well, I'm going to do I'm to Something Good, which is the yes. first song I ever recorded. Well, we are oh. Thank you yes. so much for joining us. Hey, thank you. Moon. Great to meet you. Yeah. And nice to see you. Finally, you're not afraid of me. enough chat from us but there's still some great guests to come this week including X Factor crooner Ray Quinn and reggae superstar Eddie Grant but here as promised it's the brilliant Peter Noon <laughs> Oh. 